Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Jean-Pierre Bicolo. I am a filmmaker uh, from Cameroon. Uh, I guess the reason why I'm here is basically because we've been uh, with David Bowill, who is here too, to kind of trying to see how, as a filmmaker, uh, blockchain could actually help uh, resolve some of the challenges we were facing and also for people like us, like me, who's been making films, I would say, uh, from a broad spectrum, going from what people would say independent cinema to documentary to uh, science fiction. I made the first African science fiction film. Um, and also to what some would call cinema engagé, meaning political films. Uh, the whole idea being that we are dreaming to change the world. Uh, and um, what we face also is the challenge of funding. You know, how do you fund films when the goal is not just to make money, but the goal is to change uh, something about this world you don't like. So, at some point, uh, we develop what is now called Afrofuturism in cinema. Afrofuturism started with music uh, decades ago in the U.S., but now uh, Afrofuturism has become a kind of projection of uh, Africa through cinema and maybe contemporary art, and uh, the idea being that we uh, Africa has been most of the time a topic about the past, uh, which is sometimes uh, primitive, nostalgic, and um, then the present that is always ugly, many wars and many diseases. So the idea of seeing how cinema could now, um, cinema and I could say Africa in that sense, could um, take advantage of blockchain technology and to see what step forward could be made. I made a film uh, three years ago called The President, uh, a, pres a film that was banned in Cameroon. Uh, obviously, the, the film was made because, if I give you a little background, the president of Cameroon has been in power for 37 years. Um, and obviously, um, me making a film about the president and his long-lasting regime was kind of to see if the film or cinema could help kick him out. Obviously, it requires to kind of redefine what cinema is, because um, what I did, I mixed a lot of reality and some speculative elements, which one would call fiction or science fiction, um, asking the what if question. Okay. So if, what if the president would die or something, you know? Um, and obviously it was very interesting to see the reaction of people uh, of Cameroon who have been with this man for more than three decades uh, and how confusing it was to use the medium of cinema to kind of project the whole, let's say, future of the country that is based on one man uh, into something uh, they are not allowed to, to do, meaning thinking about a country without him as a president. So um, uh, the fact that I was mixing reality, fiction, and speculation kind of made me question what cinema is and how we use it, if we use it properly or if we just are stuck with the whole concept of mainstream cinema that is just a business. I would say um, if I had to define cinema in that sense, I'll just take two definitions. One is from Jean-Luc Godard, which is a filmmaker from France, but, uh, who actually see cinema as a um, radiology, mainly, trying to make a picture of our body, meaning our society. Another one I like is uh, Christian Metz, who actually call it in French, le semble réel, something that looks like real, like reality. And the reason why I like those definitions, it's because I, it, it, it's, it's almost like I'm looking for what we can call a kind of concrete utopia, 
So meaning that you know, if our dreams, if cinema is the medium of our dreams, of our utopia, so how could we turn them into something tangible, which we hope technology and blockchain specifically can do? So um, uh, based on that definition of cinema, which is challenging somehow, let's say the Hollywood definition, just because the intention with uh, mainstream cinema is to make money, we see in cinema a medium that could do more. So um, we came up with this idea of creating a, let's say a writing program, a film writing program, where you write a film, but you also write reality. Meaning uh, we kind of see how is it possible to, to use the tools cinema gives us uh, to create a kind of fictional world and uh, how we could uh, go with those tools to kind of also write something that we can, could be real. Yeah. Uh, obviously, again, with the help of technology such as uh, blockchain, without taking out what we can call um, the, the, the aesthetic or the artistic dimension, uh, which is how do we kind of treat the impossible? Because uh, the, the, the world we live in is kind of you know, something we all feel very powerless, at least me, about uh, changing it. So that's why I think cinema is a good place to be because we are, uh, we are in a place where we can create our own world and make our own changes. So what is very important for me is actually the specific case of Cameroon. Let's say when I made the film, the president, it was about changing Cameroon somehow, hoping that the president, the film will make sure the president leaves power or something. So if <clears throat> I take the context of Cameroon, which is like a case study of a reality to change through cinema, uh, okay, right now in Cameroon, we have a situation a little bit like here in Catalonia, where we have a secession movement. Um, the Anglophone part, which is like 20% of the the country would like to be independent. Uh, but the history actually has, uh, it's kind of complex, but still, Cameroon was a German colony. Um, after World War I, uh, that German colony was given to uh, French and British by the Society of Nations, which is the UN. And um, uh, so, the two Cameroons had one British colonization and the other one a French colonization. And after independence, the UN asked the two to kind of merge and they create a federal state. And that federal state um, disappeared at some point, uh, which is I think uh, 20 years ago, because of this president to become a unified state. And now uh, the Anglophone uh, are feeling that they got enrolled in a kind of what we can call French neo-colonialism uh, because Cameroon is actually mainly in the system, the structure and everything, a kind of former French colony. So the Anglophone, uh, they start asking for, to go back to federal, federalism, which uh, the government responded very brutally by sending the army and uh, so the extreme kind of secession movement also took on the weapons. So right now, there's a war going on. There are 3,000 people who died already, 500,000 people displaced, uh, and um, the government refusing to negotiate uh, despite all the call for, for negotiation. So, this case is important because there's a kind of utopia behind the idea of federalism before and now secession. So as a filmmaker, obviously, if you feel like, okay, obviously you can feel powerless, but you could also feel that maybe because we manage this medium of, uh, I don't want to call futurism or science fiction or speculation, which is more exact term, there's a possibility to get involved and not wait for the situation to be over so that we can come later and just talk about that war, but in the past. I think cinema should 
that somehow find his role in some of these conflicts. And I hope that with technology like blockchain, we will be able to kind of do more than just be entertainment for some petit bourgeois. What I decided to do at some point was to, because there are many political prisoners because of this situation, I decided to kind of invite some of the political prisoners to, to kind of write something about the future. Uh, could be science fiction, speculation. And the reason why I picked the political prisoners because political prisoners are, are in prison first because they dare dream about something different than what is in place. And, and obviously what is in place in this specific case is the government that is running uh, the place with whatever they've been criticizing and hoping to kind of improve the situation, not just for them, but for the people who are suffering from that situation. So they are dreamers, you know, they are dreamers and because in the context you're not allowed to dream, uh, they end up in jail. And there are dreamers who also took action, who decide to do something about their dreams. And somehow, I think uh, it's important to, to kind of see what exactly they were dreaming about, and also to see how uh, 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 cinema could uh, uh, be a kind of third leg, to kind of see how we can, in front of this very repressive regime, um, uh, uh, be able to kind of make possible that something different is possible. <clears throat> what I realize is that we are dealing, because of technology uh, in general, we are now dealing with two spaces. Uh, let's say the space that is real and the space that is fictional. Um, and if I tell the story of Cameroon or even uh, the Catalan story, there's a dimension of it that is documentary, if I talk about cinema genre, it's like documentary facts, you know, chronology, we work on what happened. And there's another one that is speculative, where, and that's again, come, falls into cinema, which is science fiction, where we can speculate about what is possible, or what we can do. And if you make the two meet, meaning the science fiction part and the documentary part, obviously you can see that cinema is really at the very center of what, uh, what, what, what can be done. So um, uh, we all now double, you know, because we have our real persona and we have our virtual persona. It could be a Facebook profile or whatever it is. But what we see also is that uh, if it's a virtual, like let's say, persona, uh, we become almost material for stories, for fiction, for cinema somehow. And reality is there, you know, we are all like, between that reality and uh, fiction. And what is very clear is that the language you use in reality is not the same you use for fictional or virtual dimension. So the whole point is to see how to merge those two. How do you merge those two? And obviously it calls for a new language, a language where you can now speak to reality at the same time as you speak to fiction, which is, goes back to technology uh, and clearly uh, blockchain. Uh, and that new language obviously uh, will use some of the cinema language uh, tools. Um, we can think about structuralism or even what the Hollywood gurus actually are teaching us you know, what to make a good story. But this actually leads to something specific, which is reinventing the way we do cinema, you know, uh, and I see it more collaborative, you know, like scientists actually, or even programmers uh, in, with open source and things like this, actually work on uh, developing, um, working together. And I think script, screenplays, and specifically stories, when you're dealing with reality, like uh, in the case of Cameroon, you have clearly a possibility to uh, get more people than just a writer uh, involved. So if now we have a new cinema practice, kind of, new language, what very clear is that we are looking for, uh, and this is what you know, uh, we are here for with technology, for these stories, we are going not just to tell, 
but for the stories we are going to become. So hopefully, you know, that's uh, we will, something we will try to put in practice. And just to tell you that we have a workshop, you know, I think in a few minutes, that will be about this attempt. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this on? Yeah, to just make a, an announcement about the workshop and to give it some relevance to the blockchain technology as well. So it's not often that you have a, a film director in a conference about blockchain and we've got the opportunity to start this collaborative script which is going to be put on an IP protection platform on the blockchain in the workshop. So if you join in the script you could be one of the first co-authors of a film script. Um, Alex School later on presenting will be showing the IP protection platform. And we're also um, launching an open innovation platform for mm -hmm. film production. Um, that is a, another um, blockchain project. So um, uh, not to leave now, but the workshop isn't starting in five minutes, but just before the lunch break. So please, if you're interested, come and join in. Thank you.